You know, I, I guess I just think of the fundamental insight that led to me to Catholicism um, is the fundamental Christian insight that every human being has dignity. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're breaking down the life and career of the senator from Ohio turned 2024 Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance. The J.D. I knew then is the same J.D. you see today, except for that beard. Number 10. He's hillbilly royalty. People ask where I'm from. I say Ohio because that's where I live most of my life, but that's only part of my story. And to be clear, that's a badge of honor he wears proudly. Born James Donald Bowman, he was adopted by his mother's then-husband and rechristened Hamill. Raised primarily by his grandparents due to a fraught relationship with his unstable mother, more on that soon, Vance may be more connected to the history of the United States than just being an elected official. A distant cousin of his grandfather's married into, yes, that Hatfield family. The historical Hatfield-McCoy feud is literally that of American mythology and could probably warrant a list of its own. While we won't get into all of that right now, it's rumored that Jim Vance murdered Asa Harmon McCoy, setting off a bitter, bloody battle that stretched from 1863 into 1891. Number 9. He was raised by his grandparents. What happened to you? Well, he tried to get himself into a fight. Of all the lame brain ways to try to get out of going home, who did that? I'll kill him. If you know anything about J.D. Vance, it's that he's made his deeply troubled Appalachian upbringing a major component of his backstory and overall narrative. Vance's biological parents divorced when he was little, and he never saw eye to eye with his mother, who married five times. Vance has been open about his mother's erratic behavior, which once saw her drive the family car up to, quote, what seemed like 100 miles per hour and told me that she was going to crash the car and kill us both. You always got a reason. It's always someone else's fault. Some point, you're gonna have to take responsibility or someone else is gonna have to step in. Who, huh, who? He's called being adopted, quote, without question or qualification, the best things that ever happened to me. Curiously, Vance's grandparents were proud Democrats, preaching inclusivity and only ever veering when his grandfather voted for President Reagan in 1984. Number 8. PayPal founder Peter Thiel is his biggest champion This Silicon Valley tech magnate and prominent venture capitalist is, for better or worse, responsible for cultivating a new era of critical thinkers. For example, Thiel played a crucial role in familiarizing the general public with Elon Musk after PayPal acquired the latter's X.com in 2000. Thiel was also integral in setting Vance loose onto the global stage. The latter has called a talk by Thiel at Yale his most significant moment there. Vance's first post-Yale employment opportunity was at Mithril Capital, a venture capital firm founded and operated by Thiel. The entrepreneur later donated over $10 million to Vance's Senate campaign. Number 7 started writing Hillbilly Elegy while enrolled at Yale. Interestingly enough, even though Hillbilly Elegy put Vance on the map, Donald Trump's running mate never intended to become an author. Vance has even said that, quote, I thought the idea that I could write a meaningful book was kind of arrogant and presumptuous, but then I started writing little things here and there. It also turns out that Peter Thiel wasn't Vance's only champion. He was strongly encouraged to journal his experiences growing up by Amy Chua. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Chua is not only a law professor at Yale, but the author of the controversial memoir, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. Number 6. He was baptized in 2019. You know, I, I guess I just think of the fundamental insight that led to me to Catholicism um, is the fundamental Christian insight that every human being has dignity. Vance's relationship with religion has evolved notably over his time in the public eye. Raised in a conservative Protestant tradition, he began seriously contemplating converting to Catholicism in 2016. By 2019, the future senator had fully embraced this new faith, being both baptized and confirmed as a Catholic. Vance explained that his decision was driven by a belief in the truth of Catholicism and the influence of St. Augustine. Uh, that was a, a, a true Christian insight into our civilization. It's something that I think we shouldn't discard uh, because some people think that we should be willing to discard some inconvenient people, whether they're innocent children or anybody else. He found Augustine's writings provided a profoundly intellectual framework for understanding Christian faith. Augustine of Hippo, whom Vance chose as his confirmation saint, played a key role in shaping his spiritual journey. Vance's choice to finally make the leap was reportedly influenced by Peter Thiel. Number 5. 
He started out as a major Trump hater. Even from J.D. Vance's own mouth, he once called himself a never Trump guy. Now he's Trump's running mate in the upcoming election. They may play nice now that they share a presidential ticket, but Senator Vance and former President Trump weren't always so tight. In fact, in the wake of the 2016 presidential election, Vance made a number of comments that were unmistakably anti-Trump in nature. It's one thing to flip-flop, but it's another thing to do so with so much gusto in such a dramatic way after having laid out the case so insightfully for why Trump was a dangerous man. These weren't gentle barbs or tentative critiques. Vance is on the record as describing Trump as being, quote, reprehensible, as well as publicly musing if he could become, quote, America's Hitler. Vance even went so far as to refer to himself as a, quote, never Trump guy. Vance publicly apologized to Trump and backtracked on his criticisms of the 45th president after announcing his candidacy for the Senate. You said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine. Number four, he met his wife while at Yale. When I was asked to introduce my husband, J.D. Vance, to all of you, I was at a loss. What could I say that hasn't already been said before? It would seem that going to law school does have its benefits after all, besides, you know, the whole law degree thing. Both students at Yale Law School, Vance met Usha Chilakuri, now Usha Vance, in 2011. It occurred to me that there was only one thing to do, to explain from the heart why I love and admire JD and stand here beside him today, and why he will make a great vice president of the United States. An accomplished lawyer in her own right, Usha worked as a law clerk for several notable judges, including future Supreme Court appointee Brett Kavanaugh. Politico notes that despite Usha's obvious conservative affiliations, her personal political beliefs leaned more moderate or even liberal. Vance described her in Hillbilly Elegy by saying that, quote, if she had possessed a terrible personality, she would have made an excellent heroine in an Ayn Rand novel, but she had a great sense of humor. The JD I knew then is the same JD you see today, except for that beard. Number three, he changed his mind about Trump. We're going to get out there and try to fire up the crowd tonight and make the case, a very easy case to make, but an important case to make, that we have got to reelect President Donald J. Trump to the White House, right? Now that they're running to reclaim the White House for the Republican Party, we sure hope so. As we mentioned earlier, Vance and Trump were hardly buddies after the 2016 election. But over time, Vance did extensive damage control and retracted a number of personal attacks he had made on the former president. The media has lied more aggressively and slanderously about a guy. <laughs> and he keeps on coming through it. Managing to score Trump's endorsement was a major coup for Vance. While running, Vance called Trump, quote, the best president of his lifetime, elaborating by saying that he regretted, quote, being wrong about the guy. Vance is also quoted as saying, quote, I think he was a good president. I think he made a lot of good decisions for people, and I think he took a lot of flack. After he literally got shot, came within millimeters of losing his life in the service of this country, what did he do? I remember what I did. I was pissed. Number two, he's committed to fighting the culture war. I, I knew a lot of young women uh, growing up in a, in a poor family mm -hmm. in the Midwest that, that felt like they had to choose abortion when an unplanned pregnancy happened. Make no mistake about it. Despite being raised by, quote, union blue Democrats, Vance is a modern day capital C conservative through and through. As noted by Politico, the senator's worldview can most succinctly be described by saying that, quote, pushing back against the cultural values of progressive elites is necessary to advance the economic and political interests of the working class. And I also think, by the way, that has to be our message to the pro-choice community as well. We have to say that very often this is not about freedom and this is not about liberty. This is about young women who are forced into a decision because they feel like they don't have another option. Vance supports a 15-week abortion ban, with some exceptions, is opposed to the Respect for Marriage Act, and suggested that Joe Biden is responsible for the U.S. opioid epidemic because of a lack of security at the U.S.-Mexico border. Many people have bought into this idea that it's unacceptable for the American nation to have a border and to have border security. And because of that, there is this partisan pushback against border security. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, he's not afraid to partner with progressives. Hey, listen, I will work with anyone who wants to rein in the giant banks. And that's what that bill was all about. Wow. Making these big executives that crash banks give back their money. Isn't it nice when we can all get along? On multiple occasions, the junior senator from Ohio has proven himself willing to reach across the aisle as a means of getting things done. In 2023, the Boston Globe reported that Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts had specifically sought out Vance's help in passing a bill that would, quote, claw back the pay and bonuses awarded to top executives at failed banks. I reached out to a lot of Republicans and Democrats on the banking committee. J.D. Vance is one of them, and he stepped up and he became part of a bill that I'm working on. Warren was drawn to Vance because, as Sam Brody wrote for The Globe at the time, he, quote, had styled himself as a populist, anti-corporate Republican skeptical of the party's longtime anti-tax and free trade orthodoxy. Although the two have since publicly traded jabs, The Globe reported that Warren had called Vance, quote, terrific to work with at the time. I disagree pretty sharply with J.D. Vance on his issues around abortion. Uh, he is an extremist even among extremists. Who's your favorite senator from Ohio? Let us know in the comments below. Are you gonna die? What the hell are you asking me that for? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.